So in this lesson, we will create our first sketch block of the lower leg uh, profile sketch in a previous lesson that we put together and add some additional geometry. Then we're going to create some of the other structural profiles as this lesson series continues. So let's do this. Uh, first of all, we didn't do this at the end of last lesson, but let's uh, get in the habit of doing this. Let's go ahead and save our work. And what we want to do is we want to put our work, uh, what we've created so far, into a folder uh, of, uh, of your choosing so we can make sure that um, we can go ahead and build our windmill tower uh, using the files within that folder. So let's go ahead and uh, go to File, Save As. What we like to call this, it's uh, going to be a, uh, you know, it's going to be a part that's going to uh, simply be of uh, sketch elements and blocks within those sketch elements. We're simply going to call that sketch blocks. And typically I like to separate my words by dashes. Uh, sometimes I have to put these files on the internet for downloading and uh, on my server for downloading and having a dash in there uh, prevents, you know, other characters from being put in there in its place as a way to identify that. But let's go ahead and go to save. And uh, my file already exists here, but um, I'm going to go ahead and overwrite my file and this is going to be brand new to you. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, make a pick box around all of our sketch elements. And what we're going to do is we're going to identify all those sketch elements and then we're going to create a block out of it. If you do that, you'll notice that you have your properties manager over here and it's got the, all the elements that we've uh, just selected. But if you right click, it gives you the ability with the shortcut menu up here and this third item over here to make a block. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to make block. And back to our properties manager shows you the elements that are included in that block, four lines and uh, three arcs. And uh, what we want to do is we want to take an assertion point of this block and put it in a location that we really want to want to have it put in. Instead of arbitrarily putting it on the extremity of our of our uh, sketch elements, over what we can do is take that um, that manipulator, as it's called, which look, kind of looks like the symbol for the origin. We're going to drag it right to the origin. So what that means is when we insert this block into another uh, sketch element, that, uh, that where the cursor is going to be is where the insertion point is going to be, and uh, it'll be fairly easy to drop that block into place. Once we do that, we're going to go to the, go to the green check mark, and with our block 1-1, we're going to go ahead and rename that. So let's uh, slowly click on that, and click on it a second time. It gives us the ability to... Uh, you know, add our own text to it. And what we're going to call this is 1.75 x 1.75 dash block. Now we've created our first block. Now you notice that with that block, what we have is a dash one on that, and that's typical of uh, the way SolidWorks numbers things. Uh, when it's got a dash uh, one or a dash two, what that means is it's the first or second or third instance that uh, that block in this uh, situation or other element might have been inserted in SolidWorks. And just to show you how that works, if we were to take this block and with the control key to press, maybe grab that point, we can go ahead and create another instance of that very same block, and you notice that that's uh, you know, what we named the block and then a dash to. Don't necessarily want to do that right now, but uh, let's go ahead and right click on this and uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and edit that block. But before I do that, actually, let's go ahead and fully define this. You'll notice that we do have a block. It's sitting in the origin, but one thing to keep in mind about the block is that it's not fully defined. Uh, when we go and edit that block, uh, it'll have some of the elements that we had in there before, but outside of the block environment, what we want to do is we want to take this and consider our block as being some sort of sketch entity, and we need to fully define it. Right now, it's got no, uh, it doesn't need any dimensions on it because it's uh, kind of frozen in its state that you see in the block, but we do need to have sketch relations associated with it. So let's grab this endpoint, uh, the very edge of our block, and drag that to the origin. We'll create a coincident relationship here. And it's not fully defined yet, because you'll notice if you take one of these other points and rotate that around, you notice that we do have some degrees of freedom. So maintaining the origin that we uh, wanted before, let's go ahead and make that line horizontal, or we can make this line vertical. And what that does is it fully defines it. So our minus sign on our sketch one is going to go away. And uh, if you crank on some of these points, they're not going to move. So if we go ahead and rebuild this, that minus sign goes away, which means it's fully defined. So let's go back into our sketch one. Let's go ahead and edit that. Let's go to our block, right click on that, and we're going to go to edit block. And we're going to take a look at what we have here. What we want to do is we want to add some additional sketch geometry in here in order to make this block a little bit more usable. What we don't want to have in here 
is uh, any horizontal or vertical relationships in here. Because what we want to do with this block, perhaps, uh, if you're going to be using this block in various applications in SolidWorks, perhaps you don't want this uh, edge to be vertical. Maybe that edge, you don't want that to be horizontal. If you were to rotate this, uh, you want to make sure that uh, those things don't make conflicts when you exploit your block. So we're going to take that out. We're going to take out that horizontal. We're going to take out this vertical. And we're going to add instead a couple of other relationships in here. For these two lines, if we select with the control key, we're going to make those perpendicular. We're going to make these two lines uh, parallel. These two lines parallel. Hey, you notice that sometimes when you create these blocks at some of the dimensions and other sketch elements we had in there before, if they make a conflict in creating a block, or if there's a conflict in exploding a block, a lot of these sketch elements and dimensions will disappear, as happened here. What we have in uh, missing here is uh, our thickness that we had here at one time, which is going to be 1.35. So we're going to type in 0.135, not 1.35 for the thickness. And it's probably going to be the same down here. One thing you notice about a block too is we cannot take um, elements in here and try to define it to the origin. It'll kind of show us a preview of what that might be, but it's not going to really uh, let us drop it on the origin. Now, the thing about a block is it's kind of independent. It's got its own coordinate system in a way, and we cannot make any relationships out of the block environment to anything else outside of it. But it does show us the origin here. And we're going to try to utilize that if we can. So if you move your elements around like that, let's go to Control Z so we can get back to where we were before. Uh, what we want to do, we could put a dimension on this, or we can take this arc up here and this arc down here with the Control key to press. And we can make those equal. Now if you move this around a little bit, now you notice that the whole thing moves. This is one way to de determine whether your block is fully defined or not. It's still to be blue, but if you can move it around, uh, without it uh, uh, distorting, then you're in pretty good shape. We're going to get that back to the origin, or somewhere close to the origin. But once we move it around, do Control z until it drops back into the origin again where it was before, and now we're in pretty good shape. So let's go to the Rebuild button and see what we have. Now we have our block. If we go into Sketch 1 and go ahead and edit that, we can see that our block is fully defined to the origin, and now we're in pretty good shape. Let's go back to our block and add some additional geometry. So let's go to Edit Block. We're going to add some uh, additional elements in here that's going to help define our block a little bit better. What we want to do is draw a diagonal, sketch a diagonal uh, construction line from uh, where the origin is, the very corner of the block, to the midpoint of that arc. And we're going to put a dimension on it. Now, this might overdefine it. It's not going to like it, but we're going to make that dimension driven. And what we want to do is we want to remember that value in here, 0.243. What that is is it's rounded up a little bit from uh, 2.2427, and we do want to round that up. And what we're going to do, and we're going to go back to using uh, just three units after the decimal, what we're going to do is we're going to remember that number, and I'll bring that up uh, when we go ahead and copy this block, and I'll show you how we're going to put our tower legs together. That dead number becomes relevant. Uh, something else we want to do is we want to put in some geometry so when we line up our holes on uh, the extrusions we're going to make for our legs here, we want to make sure that they line up with uh, the, you know, the parameters within the block. So we're going to draw some center lines, sketch some center lines from one line, uh, exterior line over here to the other, and do the same thing down here. And then we're going to put some dimensions on that from the top of the arc down to that. So let's go ahead and take that uh, dimension. Let's go to leaders, and what we want to do is we want to put the maximum condition on that leader. This is the reason why you don't want a dimension to the center of the circle or the center of the arc. If you center to the arc itself or to the circle itself, it gives you that uh, flexibility of either, you know, when you put a dimension on it, to have a minimum center or a maximum condition on that, uh, on that dimension. So one of these lines is going to be 11 sixteenths, and I, got, I think I got really close at that. Now let's go ahead and change that to uh, 4 units after the decimal in regard to its precision. Now we're going to do the same thing with another dimension. Oops, yeah, we're going to go from this line to that arc. We already have that drawn into place. You go to the green chalk mark, we're going to do the same thing here too. We're going to take that dimension, go to leaders, and we're going to give that the maximum condition. And then we're going to type in uh, the appropriate value, which is going to be 13 divided by 16. Precision up to 4 units after the decimal. 
now we're in pretty good shape. One last thing we want to do before we go ahead and close this block is we're going to go ahead and borrow these two elements we just sketched, and we're going to mirror that. We're going to mirror it so it appears down here. We're going to use this uh, diagonal line down here that we sketched in earlier. So if we go to Mirror Elements, those two elements are selected to be mirrored. And if we go inside of this to Mirror About, we're going to go ahead and select on this line. And you'll see the preview of these lines down here. If we go to the green check mark, we should be in pretty good shape. So now if we take the end point of that, uh, of our uh, block, of the sketch elements that make up that block, everything moves uh, all together. So we're in pretty good shape there. Let's do Control Z and bring that back to the origin. Now let's go ahead and rebuild. Now let's just check it one more time. Let's go to Sketch 1, Edit That Sketch, and make sure all the elements we had in here before are there, which is going to be our coincident relationship with the origin down here. The vertical relationship here, if we were to tug on any of these uh, points out here, it seems to stay in place, so we're in pretty good shape there. All right, sounds good. Let's go ahead and save this, save our work.